Hello, welcome back to the video series for Ge Geography 300, Geographical Data Analysis for WVU. We're now moving into the second segment of this set of videos, looking at geographically weighted regression. This, introduce, this video introduces the concepts. Now, if you remember, going back to the different kinds of spatial regression, they were based on different assumptions of how you could have had a problem in your regular linear regression. And this now applies really to both bivariate and multivariate regression. If you have a um, dependency within the dependent variable, so a spillover effect for in the dependent variable itself from one place to its neighbors, that's the spatial lag model. If you have a relationship where you think there's some kind of missing factor that's causing those spatially autocorrelated errors, you can go with the spatial error model. And that can be a missing spatial factor even above and beyond everything in a multivariate regression. The third approach that I mentioned is geographically weighted regression. So, one of the other assumptions of regression is that the, uh, the effect, the coefficient, the effect of an independent variable upon the dependent variable is <coughs> consistent across the entire study area. That may not be the case. In especially in, say, human geography, there could be situations where there are other cultural factors that affect how the independent and dependent variables interact with each other. It could even be in one part of the study area, it's a positive relationship. In another part, it's a negative relationship. So to represent that, what we do is we're not going to have a single coefficient value. We're not going to have just the effect of income on health insurance. No, we're going to have a map of how that effect, how that coefficient changes from one place to the next. Okay, so how do we get our one place to the next? How does it work? So as with spatial lag and spatial error, you probably suspected that spatial waste matrix or how we're defining a place's neighborhood is going to show up somehow or other. We're running a linear regression, but now instead of a regression for, every, for the entire study area, the entire state of West Virginia, now with 55 counties, we are doing 55 regression equations. 55 linear regressions, one for each county, one for each observation. Each one is limited to its neighborhood. So if I have a, an eight nearest neighbor neighborhood, that means I'm going to do 55 regression equations 
each of which has nine entries, nine observations. The central place and the date nearest neighbors. Then, once I have the coefficient for every location, the local r squared for every location, the p-value for every location, I can then map these out and say here, instead of having a single coefficient, I have a map of the coefficients and how that changes from one place to another. That is the essence here, the introduction of geographically weighted regression. Instead of a single regression equation for the entire area, we're now doing many local regressions. We'll go into more detail on this idea and its interpretation in the next video. As always, if you have questions, feel free to ask during Zoom class or um, by email. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.